Hey guys, this is Bruce, and we're going to be talking about a job with Raytheon in Aurora, Colorado, for a storage engineer. Okay, this is a storage engineer at Raytheon in Aurora, Colorado. That's over around Denver area. And before we start, I should tell you everything that I'm talking about, if you're trying to get in touch with this employer, is going to be in the description below. Now it is a 12 month contract, it is right now. It's 2019 going into 2020. So if maybe it's 2021 by the time you read this and by the time you've seen this video, you should apply anyway, because this recruiter is always sending me out new opportunities. So you should give them your resume if you're actually looking for a software uh, storage engineer job in Raytheon, then go for it. And if you're actually interested in courses, you can contact me in the link below. It's at combocourses.com. If you want to know about how to get a remote position, I've been doing it for four, uh, for four years, five years now. Uh, if you want to do cybersecurity entry level and you don't know where to even begin. If you want to know about cybersecurity and how to get up to six figures in it, which I've been doing for many years. And then if you want to know any of those things, I have courses on them. So go ahead and check them out. All right, let's get into this. So we're talking about storage engineer and it's a 12 month uh contract and they're expecting you to have a secret clearance so if you don't have a secret clearance this is only a 12 month contract so i don't imagine they'll take anybody without a secret clearance just so you know so i would not even waste your time if you don't have one uh if you happen to be a storage person let's see what responsibilities are they looking for all right they're looking for responsible storage configuration of a responsible you're going to be responsible for excuse me you're going to be responsible for uh, storage configuration of storage upgrades for a NAS um, and a SAN for SAN services on VM uh, virtual machines and databases. You're going to design and implement fiber channels, uh, fiber uh, fabric configuration. You're going to maintain and design and program documentation. Now, if you're a storage expert, you know what all this stuff means. Now, I, I've only dabbled in this, so I can only tell you. I can only tell noobs like what I know in general terms what it is. So what they're talking about is large organizations who process lots and lots of data and more and more organizations, the larger they get, the more data that they have to store, that they have to retrieve quickly. And cloud, for example, when they say cloud, this is the kind of back end technology that they're talking about where you have a large storage for many different clients uh, all over the the United States are all over the world even so and all over the countries uh, so whatever country you have to be in <clears throat> so this back-end technology is it stores the data but also what it does is it very quickly retrieves and writes data and then it also has a redundant backup so if it this storage unit should go down it will have a automatic failover that that Automatic. So the client who's accessing the data doesn't see when the systems fail. Systems fail all the time. But what happens is in the background you have a what's what's called a failover that will automatically go over to this other system. And so the client or the customer who's accessing their data doesn't even know that that system went down, right? So that's where a storage engineer comes in. They make sure that that failover works. They make sure that, the, that this, this very fast... And it's got these fiber connections that are connecting the failovers and connecting it to this module that's making sure that the systems are are uh, have an active sync. I, I'm 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 kind of not clear on the terminology. There's a lot of terminology I'm missing. So the, these storage guys are like, "What is this guy talking about?" I'm just trying to give a basic understanding of what what, what this stuff is, what the storage network attached storage area is. Uh, anyway, let's keep going here. So uh, develop and maintain storage configuration. So okay, I already said that for SAN and NAS, uh, spinning disks, solid state uh, configuration. Okay, develop and maintain backup configurations, backup components, including backup servers, library tapes, backup policy, backup. So you, they're expecting you to write, have the policy together, either write it or maintain it so that somebody else behind the storage engineer can say, okay, uh, let's update this storage policy. Here's, yay, verily, you will do this and you will do that. 
with this storage unit and here's a configuration of what it looks like and uh, here's the new technology these these devices are really good for databases by the way super duper good for databases because databases are designed to manage very large sets of data so a lot of times when you're going to your when you're going to Google to do a search they're using all this stuff we're talking about they have storage back-end networks and if you're doing AWS or if your organization does AWS or whatever they're for almost definitely using some sort of a database that's riding on some type of a NAS some sort of a, either in-house NAS that they have or one of these uh, commercial NASs that are out there or SAN um, so there's storage area network and there's a network attached storage so that's the the different acronyms there um, and I can't I, I'm not smart enough to articulate what the differences are if you guys know I'm sure there's some storage geniuses out there you guys want to articulate what the differences are between them I'm sure I could google it real quick but articulate what the difference between a direct attached storage a uh, uh, storage area network and a, net, a network attached storage what are the differences between those those three and I mean I could I think I know what it is but I don't want to like tell people lies so i'm just gonna keep going <laughs> um okay let's kind of keep going here required skills so this is a, always really important whenever you're applying for any of these jobs to look at their required skills and say if they have them but they're saying that you need to possess a secret or higher like i said if you don't have a secret clearance since this is only a six uh, 12 month gig if you don't have a secret clearance i wouldn't even waste my time i just keep going um or higher higher would be a top secret top secret SEI or that kind of thing uh, working knowledge of data center storage systems um, including storage systems primary HPE storage systems also they have a HPE huh and NAS attach NAS and SAN protocols for accessing data and working knowledge of fiber fiber channel configuration and a fiber switch switches i've worked with many of these things before but it's been a really long time i had to had the benefit of actually knowing a lot of this stuff for a, for an organization i worked for so i do know a little something but not i wouldn't be able to hit the ground running on a job like this these pay pretty good usually Depends on the organization, of course. Desired skills, they're listing um, DISA-STIGs. A DISA-STIG is basically a breakdown of, it's a security technical implementation guide from the Department of Defense that is used all over the federal government, and even some state departments and private organizations use it because it's so effective. But what it does is it walks you through all of the best practices that you need uh, to secure a system. They want you to know a little bit about CRs, that's a change request. DRs, I can't remember what DR stands for. IR, uh, incident request, incident response, written and clear request. I think that's what, what they're talking about when they say IR, incident response. Okay, so let me see here. Oh, they want you to be experienced with Windows, Linux system administration because some of the back end of the NASs and SANS are based on Linux. This is why it's really important if you're a noob to know some Linux because Linux commands are in routers or in switches. They're in NAS devices. Because I knew like Linux, I was able to navigate, e more easily navigate databases and um, and the back end of NAS network attached storage devices and uh, security area networks because their back end usually is based on some sort of, of of Linux and command line, things like that. Uh, Windows 7, knowledge of Windows 7, Windows 16 or later, scripting and background in commercial off the shelf products installation. All right, I'll put all the, all the contact information below and all these descriptions so you don't have to Go back and reread re re this stuff from directly from my screen. Uh, and then also I have ConvoCourses.com if you're interested in learning more about how to get into Mostly I fo focus on cybersecurity, how to get a job in cybersecurity, 
things like that and then remote work and and information system security officer work all right that's it see you guys on the next one